Manchester United dreams were shattered when they lost eight of their star players in the Munich air disaster. However, against all odds, the club rose from the ashes and went on to achieve greatness under the leadership of Sir Matt Busby. This is the story of a club that went from nothing to everything. On February 6, 1958, the world was shaken by the news of a devastating tragedy involving British European Airways Flight 609. This flight was carrying a total of 44 passengers, including the talented players of the Manchester United football team, club officials, journalists and fans. They were returning home from a successful European Cup match against Red Star Belgrade, where they had secured their place in the semi-finals of the tournament. However, the plane crashed on its third attempt to take off from a runway covered in slush at Munich's airport in West Germany. The crash resulted in the loss of 20 lives on the spot, with three more passengers succumbing to their injuries in the days that followed. Among the deceased were eight members of the football team who were full of potential and were considered to be the future European champions. The loss was a devastating blow, not just for the club, but also to the world of football, as these young men had so much to offer. The crash not only disrupted the team's title aspirations for that year, but also destroyed the core of what promised to be one of the most talented generations of football players in English history. The tragedy was felt deeply by all those associated with the club and the sport, and its impact continues to be felt this day. As a memorial to the lost players and staff, the clock at Old Trafford Stadium, the home of Manchester United, remains permanently set to 3.04pm, the exact time where the fateful aircraft crashed in the snowy conditions of Munich. The slush-covered runway, combined with the snowy weather conditions, caused significant concern among the pilots and air traffic controllers. The first two attempts at takeoff were aborted due to the hazardous conditions, and the third attempt ended in disaster. Despite the best efforts of the pilots, the aircraft was unable to gather enough momentum on the sludge-covered runway, leading to the crash. The plane skidded off the end of the runway, hitting the airport fence and sliding across a road. The port wing was torn off as it hit a house, and a portion of the tail was also detached. The left side of the cockpit collided with a tree, while the right side of the fuselage hit a wooden hut containing a truck filled with fuel, resulting in a massive explosion. The impact of the crash was devastating both for those who lost their lives and for the future of English football. At the time, the club was a dominant force in English football, having won two consecutive championships and boasting a talented young squad of players that were destined for greatness. They were seen as the embodiment of what football should be and was revered for their talent and dedication to the sport. The crash took the lives of eight of these players, including Roger Byrne, Eddie Coleman, Mark Jones, Liam Whelan, Tommy Taylor, David Pegg, George Bent and Duncan Edwards, who were all at their prime of their careers. The tragedy also forced two other players, Jackie Blancheflower and Johnny Berry, to retire prematurely, adding to the devastating impact the crash had on the club and the sport. The loss of these young and talented players was a cruel blow, not only to Manchester United, but also to the world of football, as their potential and promise were taken away too soon. The loss of Duncan Edwards was particularly devastating to Manchester United, as he was widely regarded as one of the greatest footballers England had ever produced. At just 16 years old, he made his first team debut for the club and went on to play over 150 games for the team and another 18 games for the England seniors. Despite his young age, Edwards was a force to be reckoned with, thanks to his impressive physique and exceptional technical abilities. Sir Matt Busby, who had been closely associated with Edwards, wrote in his memoirs that he was the only player who made him feel inferior. Edwards' untimely death was a cruel blow not only to Manchester United, but also to the entire football community, as the world lost a player who was considered a true genius of the sport. The club struggled in the aftermath of the crash, finishing 8th in the 1958-1959 season and hovering in mid-table obscurity in the early 1960s. However, Sir Matt Busby, who himself was injured in the crash, was determined to rebuild the team. He signed new talent including Pat Gerrand and Dennis Law and continued the club's legacy of developing youth players by bringing up George Best through the youth system. This hard work and determination paid off in 1963 when an unexpected FA Cup win gave the team newfound confidence and marked the start of one of the club's most successful periods in its history. The win at Wembley with Paddy Kerrin being named Man of the Match was a sign that Manchester United was truly back on the rise. Busby had a great run. 
But as the recollection of Manchester United's European Cup victory started to diminish, the club shifted its focus to its vacant managerial position. So Matt Busby, who guided the team to success, had retired, leaving behind an important legacy. To maintain a sense of continuity, Manchester United chose to appoint Wilf McGuinness, one of Busby's former coaches and players, to take on the senior role. However, McGuinness faced challenges in exerting his authority due to a combination of declining star players and a lack of control over team affairs. His decisions to transfer popular figures like Dennis Law and Shea Brennan and George Best's disruptive off-field conduct did not improve the situation. Franco Farrell was named the next manager of Manchester United in June of 1971, but his time in charge came to an abrupt end following a 5-0 loss to Crystal Palace on December 16, 1972. Despite his brief tenure, O'Farrell made a lasting impact by breaking the transfer record with an acquisition of Martin Buchan for £125,000. The former Aberdeen captain became a key figure for O'Farrell's replacement, Tommy Doherty, who was hired around the holiday season in 1972. Under Doherty's leadership, Manchester United quickly regained its form. The team won the second division title in the 1974-75 season in impressive fashion, with top scorer Stuart Pearson, also known as Pancho, contributing 17 league goals. Lou Macari sealed their promotion by scoring the crucial goal against Southampton on April 5, 1975. United reached two consecutive FA Cup finals, losing to Southampton in 1976, but defeating Liverpool 2-1 the following year. The victory over Liverpool came at a cost, as Doherty was sacked 44 days later due to off-field scandals. Dave Sexton took over and despite finishing no higher than 10th in his first two seasons, he led the team to another FA Cup final in 1979 where they lost 3-2 to Arsenal. Despite a poor start in the 1980s, United finished two points behind Liverpool in the title race for the 1979-1980 season and won their best last seven league games in a row in 1980-1981. Ron Atkinson was hired as the new manager and brought in several key players, including Brian Robson and Remy Moses, but he was eventually sacked after four seasons. Fast forward a few years, in 1986 Alex Ferguson was appointed as Manchester United manager after a successful career at Aberdeen. Despite finishing 11th in the league in the 1986-1987 and 1988-1989 seasons, Ferguson showed promise by leading United to second place in the league in 1987-1988. In the 1990s saw Ferguson's success at United, starting with his first FA Cup win in 1990 which allowed the club to return to European competition. The following year United won the European Cup Winners Cup with Mark Hughes scoring the winning goal against Barcelona. This marked the start of an unprecedented period of success for the club under Ferguson. In the 1991-1992 season, Manchester United were in a close race for the league championship with Leeds United. However, a 2-0 loss against Liverpool ended their title challenge. The following year, the arrival of Eric Cantona from Leeds United brought a new level of magic and confidence to the team. Cantona's instant success, scoring nine goals, helped United win their first league title in 26 years. The following season, in 1993-1994, was historic for United, as they achieved the league and FA Cup double, with Cantona sporting the legendary number 7 shirt and Peter Schmeichel as the unbeatable number 1 goalkeeper. Despite their success, the eight-month absence of Cantona in the following season due to a fan incident at Crystal Palace affected the team's performance, and they surrendered the title to Blackburn Rovers and lost the FA Cup final to Everton. An injury to their captain Steve Bruce and a less than fully fit Ryan Giggs also contributed to their defeat in the cup final. When 1997 came around, Eric Cantona helped Manchester United win their fourth league title of the decade before retiring. In 1997 to 1998, United went on without any silverware while Arsenal won the double. Key players' injuries included Giggs and Roy Keane, who were a factor in United's downfall. However, in the 1999 FA Cup semi-final replay, Giggs scored a memorable solo goal to lead United to their fifth FA Cup win in the 1990s. In May 1999, United won their third double, beating Newcastle 2-0 in the FA Cup final. But their greatest achievement came in the Champions League, where they overcame Bayern Munich in a stunning comeback, clinching the treble. 
The treble was significant as it marked the club's first European Cup win since 1968 and it helped to heal the wounds of the Munich tragedy. The team also went on to win the Intercontinental Cup and was crowned the World Cup champions, solidifying their position as the biggest and best club in the world. The success earned manager Sir Alex Ferguson a knighthood. The memories of the Busby Babes and what could have been still live in the minds of many fans and football enthusiasts, even after all these years. The team's loss was a massive blow to the sport and it was a reminder of how quickly things can change. The players were not just footballers, they were symbols of hope and promise, and their untimely loss left a void that would take years to fill. Despite the loss, Manchester United continued to thrive, with Sir Matt Busby, his successor Wilf McGuinness, and all the ones who followed managing to rebuild the team with new players. It is a testament to the strength of the club and its fans that they were able to overcome such a loss and achieve greatness in the decades that followed. Today, the story of the Munich air disaster and the Busby Babes remains an important part of Manchester United history and is a reminder of the power of resilience and the human spirit. Thanks for watching.